So we're gonna talk about the four different types of mortgage institution. So before you purchase a home, you the main question is who has the mortgage appetite for, to fulfill your need, right? So everyone is gonna be different. So I'm gonna go over the four different types of mortgage institution, then I'm gonna give you my picks, okay? The first institution is the depository banks. So the depository banks, of course, everyone knows, are the banks that you can go in, you can make deposits. That's why there's the depository banks, right? So they do mortgage as one of the products they sell, right? Banks have checking accounts, savings accounts, money markets accounts, CDs. They loan money for car loans, personal loans, business loans, and mortgages, right? So those are the depository banks. A lot of the main, the main ones right there is Citi, Chase, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, U.S. Bank. Also, credit unions. Of course, there's so many different credit unions out there. That's why we just did credit unions as the logo, right? So credit unions, right? So with depository banks, I like depository banks. I work for depository banks. Uh, depository banks are really good when it comes to conventional loans. They're really good when it comes to jumbo loans. They don't do a lot of crazy things. They just give good deals to clients that have good credit, good down payment. And of course, if you bank with them, sometimes they give you a special deal. I do like depository banks in this market right now because they are aggressive in the purchase market. Because they want your new money, they want you to open the checking and savings account with them. Eventually, they're trying to win over all your business. So they stay competitive with purchases. On refinances, not so much, but on purchases, that's where they're swinging to get your business. So if you have good credit and you're putting down a good down payment, or you're getting, you're getting a jumbo loan, yes, I like depository banks a lot. They're priced really well in the market and they have low closing costs. And the reason why they have low closing costs is because they make the money servicing the loan. They don't need to charge you all these fees up front because they're selling the loan. So a lot of times their fees are low and their rates are low. And the reason why their rates are low is because they don't want early payment defaults. So they don't sell high rates or they don't sell where, you know, you get the loan and you refinance it because the rates are too high. That's why they are so competitive with the rates. They don't want early payment defaults. They don't want early payoffs too as well, right? So that's why I like depository banks a lot. And now the second bank is the mortgage banks. There's mortgage banks and there's direct lenders. So the difference between a mortgage bank and a depository bank is a mortgage bank, yes, they have brick and mortars out there, but they only have, they're only have they only selling one product. Their bread and butter is mortgage, right? With depository, like I said, they're a little bit more conservative because they have other products they're selling. The mortgage banks, right? Rocket Mortgage, SunTrust, right? Loan Depot, Lenda, Guaranteed Rate. Because they're in the business of just loans, right? A lot of times, if you have the crafty uh, file or if you are a crafty client, right? Your profile has some challenges with credit, down payment. A lot of times because they also fund their loan with their own money and they also service loans just like depository banks. The only difference, like I said, they're in the business of mortgage, right? They are really good when it comes to problem files, challenges. Realtors love mortgage banks because they close loans quick because they're in the business of mortgage. With depository banks, if you have good credit, you have a good down payment, yes, they wanna earn your new money, but they're not gonna put themselves at risk to earn it. So if you are if you are a challenging borrower, depository banks might, might not be the best, but if you want that same speed, power, mortgage banks is the second best thing. The third type of lending institution is direct lenders. So direct lenders, are kind of like mortgage banks. I'm going in order from mortgage bank to direct lender. Direct lenders, they fund their loan with their own money with like a credit card, right? They call it a warehouse line. So they would loan your money, they would give you the loan with a their warehouse line. And when the loan funds, they sell it to the investor. So question one of the Wham fam people asked was, hey men, why is my loan sold so many times? A lot of times when you go direct lender, they don't service the loan. So when your loan is sold, whoever's taking over your loan is also servicing it. A lot of times, mortgage banks sells your loans as well, but they service your loan and they make money servicing your loan. So that's the reason why they service it, but they sell, they might sell the loan off. It might be sold to another lender, but they service it. You couldn't tell the difference, right? But with direct lenders, they do not service it. Direct lenders a lot of times are approved with a bunch of investors. They're not Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac approved, but direct lenders, same thing. They have their own underwriter. They have 
everything in-house and then the business of doing mortgage they're smaller than mortgage banks right but their job is to get the loans done they're really good when it comes to uh government loans right because a lot of times government loans are a lot more lenient on credit and income so direct lenders do really good job closing the loans fa fast with conventional loans and jumbo direct lenders a lot of times they're not priced in the market right because they are a small company and they're not making money servicing the loan because they don't have the, the ability to, to service the loan that's why they're unconventional they're not as competitive and the rates are a little bit higher because they can't take a hit on rate because they don't service your loan so if you're going to go with conventional direct lenders a lot of times have higher rates but they do really well when it comes to down payment assistance especially if you're buying a home and your debt to income ratio is just right there the at the dti qualification for that down payment assistance every um State has their own down payment assistance programs, direct lenders, since they can control the underwriting, the income, they'll be more certain on what the income is going to be, especially if you're right there teetering on that line of qualifying, not qualifying. I like mortgage banks and I like direct lenders when it comes to down payment assistance because they have a lot more control and they're willing to take more risk because they're in the business of mortgage lending all day. Depository banks, they want your business, but not at a high risk. So if you're at a high risk, they rather not take the business. If you're low risk, yes, they will give you the shirt off their back to give you the best deal because they want that your new money. So fourth mortgage institution is mortgage brokers. So the mortgage broker is a one man band, two man band, three man band, or there's a there's a lot of mortgage brokers that have a bunch of loan officers that do work for them. The way mortgage brokers work is they take your scenario and they shop it with like 10, 20 wholesalers and they're going to find you the best deal possible they're not locked into one guideline direct lenders they're not locked into one guideline either but they have overlays mortgage banks normally don't have overlays and uh, they'll go off of fannie may and freddie mac guidelines right fannie and freddie mac pretty much set the standard of guidelines but direct lenders a lot of times have overlays and uh, the banks don't. So with brokering, you have a chance to, okay, well, I know this wholesaler has this overlay. Let me send it over here. Depending on your scenario and what you're looking for at interest rate, mortgage brokers jobs is to find the best deal that fits your scenario. I like them a lot because their rates are smoking outside of, um, depository banks on con on conventional and jumbo loans i like brokering a lot it gives you more option option and flexibility uh and brokers are coming back strong right now back in early 2000 2010 2010 to 2015 direct lenders controlled it but brokers are now back in the market with really good rates really good service back before 2000 right 2010 2015 brokering service wasn't great there was they're still working through a lot of challenges and hicc hiccups but brokering loans is coming back strong right now even if you have those difficult files right but if you want certainty on difficult files a lot of times direct lenders and mortgage banks since they do underwrite it themselves they can make that judgment call the bad thing about brokers yes they're gonna have good rates they can shop your loan but because the underwriters aren't their underwriters in-house the those underwriters are trying to protect the their bank as well so they have a job the next day right so a lot of times they won't give you as many exceptions as you would find in a direct lender or mortgage banker those are the four different types of lending institution and that's the breakdown how they all work hopefully you understand how they all work and now this is the my picks of what i like from order from top to bottom depending on the program if there's a program that you don't see as my top pick please reach out to me and i'll go ahead and answer that question for you okay so let's go with jumbo here right so jumbo from my favorite to my least this is based on rates and based on power and closing costs power means they can slam your loan without hiccups they specialize in that product so here let's go with jumbo loans depository banks so if you're gonna go in the jumbo right a lot of times yes other brokers and other companies do 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 jumbo as well but brokers and mortgage breaks and direct lenders if the loan amount's really big they have to send it out to the investor to underwrite it with uh, with depository banks, when it's jumbo, they still underwrite it in-house. So you minimize risk because you're not sending it out to be underwritten. It's underwritten in-house, right? Also, depository banks on jumbo, they go out of their way to give better rates on jumbo as well. Like I said, they want that new money to cycle through their bank system. So they're gonna fight tooth and nail for to give you a smoking deal on a 
purchase because they want you to open checking accounts so they can lower the lower your your closing costs they open a checking account because they eventually want to win over your money in their checking account right so definitely got a checking account savings account they want to sell you other products and they use mortgages to get you in because think about it, if you have a mortgage you are a pretty reasonable person that has good money that has goals has ambitions and that's saving for a future and that future a lot of times de uh, depends on you depositing money that's why with jumbo direct depository banks are awesome right second brokering depository banks will give you good rates low fees and power brokering you'll have good rates decent fees but your power your control is not as strong as um depository if you are going jumbo yes they still have good rates but you're buying something and if the you know most people who are buying jumbo are going to be self-employed and it's all based on interpretations if your broke mortgage broker is not on point you have higher risk right of not getting your loan approved compared to a depository that lender doesn't have the loan officer doesn't have to be some high caliber one they have people at the company that specialize in jumbo that will close your deal so third mortgage banks mortgage banks and direct lenders they do not specialize in jumbo they do do jumbo but with their jumbo they have to send it to the investor to underwrite it so the rates aren't good one the fees aren't going to be great and number three they are sending to investors and there's no control even though broker has no control you're going to get the better rate with the broker on a jumbo loan than a mortgage bank or direct or or direct lender okay second let's go with 100 percent financing right so 100 financing down payment assistance right i like mortgage banks and direct lenders remember why i said mortgage banks and direct lenders because they are aggressive on your income and they will be a little more looser when it comes to your income, especially with down payment assistance programs throughout the United States. They all have lower debt to income ratios that you can qualify at, right? Or even if it's at its max, like Ch Chinoya follows Fannie Mae guidelines when it comes to DTI, which is like 55%. Uh, but a lot of times you're doing the rates are higher on down payment assistance. So you might get less home because your rate is higher or you won't qualify. But when you go with a mortgage bank and a direct lender, they are very aggressive with the guidelines. They are very aggressive at providing you this loan. So if you want certainty for 100% financing loans or down payment assistance, mortgage banks and direct lenders pound for pound are going to beat the other two. Right. So brokering. Brokering is also good for 100% financing, but it's not the greatest. Like I said, it's somewhat of a gamble sometimes because the interpretation of income. Remember, brokering, the fees will probably be a little bit lower than uh, mortgage banks and direct lenders, but you're taking that risk when you're doing 100% financing. Remember, banks, a lot of banks don't want to take risk. And mortgage bankers and direct lenders, they're using their own money. They'll take risk, right? But brokering, because the wholesaler who's receiving the loan is receiving it from a third party. So a lot of times they don't want to take that risk, but doesn't mean they won't do the loan. Last but not least on 100% financing, depository banks. You are a high risk in their eyes. Doesn't mean they don't do 100% financing. Some depository banks do, some of them don't. They're really high risk to them. They're not going to take chances because you're not putting money down, but they do provide those loans to consumers. I guess it's mandatory that they do provide it, but doesn't mean they make it easy for you to get 100% financing, right? So third type of mortgages, right? Government loans, FHA, VA, USDA. We forgot USDA, but USDA, right? Here is my order. If it was me, I would go through a broker. Rates are smoking on purchases they're pretty easy to qualify broker the broker world came back strong the last five years and they're killing it right now right mortgage brokers are killing it when it comes to fha and va loan they would be my pride and joy bread and butter to do um to go through through um through brokering uh, fha or va loans second depository banks go back to broker and broker rates are going to be smoking they're flexible with guidelines, but not too flexible. But if you're going to say that the all four, the best of the best, I say brokering because rates are good, fees are low, and they are taking a little bit more flexible files, but not as good as direct lender and mortgage bank. We'll talk about, about that in a second. And then so next, depository banks, right? Depository banks, rates are good. They're just same as broker, but actually broker beats up. Uh, depository bank when it comes to rates right but the rates on depository is still strong if your ideal situation for a va and you don't have a lot of times you go va you don't need credit flexibility you're a veteran but fha a lot of time is credit flexibility you need so 
if you're a VA, depository banks are good. FHA, they're good as well. But, you know, if you're not cookie cutter, it's really hard to get a government loan through but depository banks. Just like 100% financing. They want your money, but they're not willing to take big risks, okay? Third, direct lenders and mortgage bankers. Direct lenders and mortgage bankers, they're very similar. So sometimes like when I give you guys examples, I kind of put them together. Direct lenders, mortgage bankers, they are in the business of giving loans. So they understand the flexibility of FHA and VA. They are aggressive. They're going to get your deal done if it's a hard deal. But remember, they're at the bottom for a reason because their rates are not great. Uh, with direct lenders, mortgage banks, they don't compete that much on conventional. But on government loans, that's where they make their money. So, of course, they're going to they don't make that much on conventional. They pick it up in FHA and VA because they all add more to the rate. Rates will be higher, but you'll get your deal done. But remember, you have to be reasonable as a buyer. If you're high risk, you got to take that higher rate. You can't expect to be a high risk and not take high rates. So for FHA and VA, I would do direct lending and mortgage banking last. Uh, if it's a complicate, super complicating file, uh, then I would go direct lending and mortgage bank first. But in order from interest rate, fees, and power, right? Power means power, the ability to close the loan, Broker, depository, direct lender, and mortgage banks. Last but not least, you guys are all reaching out for me this, refinancing. So if you already own a home and it was a complicated home and you own it already, when you refinance, it gets it's a lot easier. So you don't need too much flexibility in qualifying because you they know you already own the home in the first place. As long as your payments are made in time, the bank kind of knows that you can afford the payment, okay? So let's get into refinancing, right? I like the broker first. Broker rates on refinances are extremely low, right? Because they have different comp plans on refinances. They take a lower comp, uh, lower commission on it, but they can set up their comp plan that way, right? So definitely, I like brokering first. If you have an FHA or a VA loan already and you're looking to do an EARL for a VA or, or a streamline for, a, for FHA, I would go brokering first, right? Second, depository banks. If you go depository bank, rates are good, fees are low, right? Because the refinance was, you already own the home, you're low risk to the bank, they're willing to be very aggressive when it comes to rate as well. So even if it's FHA, VA, cash out, depository banks, I like it second best. After that, mortgage banks and direct lenders. Mortgage banks, when it is a refi, a lot of times they do offer better deals than a direct lender because they're a bigger institution, right? They can be more aggressive because they want to make it, they want to ride that, especially when there's refis and there's a lot of it's a refi boom. That's where mortgage bankers make their money. And then last but not least, direct lenders. They're good as well, but the rates are just not as good when you think about mortgage bank, depository, and broker. So that's my order of the type of lending institution I would use when I'm trying to purchase a home, depending on the program, uh, what you want, and then last but not least, refinancing, right? So first, first you need a congratulations on wanting to buy a home. The next step is finding the perfect situation. And the goal of this live stream is to educate, empower, and to connect. Hopefully, I provide you, uh, provided you enough information to make a decision on the type of lender you want to work with. If you do have questions, reach out. Guys, do me a favor. If I brought you any value tonight, please give me the thumbs up and please like this page. And don't forget to share it. If the person who's buying a home with you or you're gonna refinance with them is not there, do me a favor. Please tag them on this video so they're notified and educated about what's a mortgage.